Yeah, as, as Joanna said, so I, I spent um, the bulk of my career in the private sector and joined Northumberland County Council a couple of years ago. Um, so I, I don't have the, uh, the benefit of um, the long view that John has of, of Durham County Council. So what I can say is that Northumberland declared a climate emergency in 2019. Um, there was a commitment to deliver net zero by, by 2030. Um, there was and there continues to be really strong buying to this across the county with residents, the business community, the third sector. And, and I think key picking up on a lot of Councillor Clare's points, um, this is a, a cross party commitment. Um, and it's uh, for those uh, st uh, students of Northumberland County Council, it's probably the only apolitical thing that's going on right now um, in, in the county. And which is great because it means post-election nothing's going to change for, for, for me nor, nor the team which we're starting to build, which is, which is good news. Um, when the climate emergency was declared, I think what's probably fair to say is there was lots of ideas around projects and, and what could be done. But there was very little, um, and I'm probably being kind, you could say almost no detail on how these projects would, would work in practice, how they would reduce emissions, to exactly to John's point, how they were costed. Um, and you know that that was um, a little bit of a concern, um, as you can imagine. So, given given that starting point, what I'm going to try and do in ten minutes is is sort of describe what we did, given that um, that backdrop. Um, and you know, it's probably important to say this is by no means a kind of finished piece of work. We're probably at kind of step one of of um, an infinite number of steps, you, you might say. Um, but 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 it is encouraging, I think, the um, the progress that we've made. So. Um, oh, I need to click over here. So, so we started with the data. So this isn't actually climate change data. This is my stride running data. Um, uh, I'm, I'm a runner. Um, uh, that, that's actually what I want to do in life. But um, unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I've passed my peak. I'm too old. Um, but I guess the point is that there's so much data out there in terms of what we could um, uh, use to kind of contextualize um, climate change. Um, so what we did was we basically pulled all that, that information together. Um, and, you know, I think the main point here is, is that we, you know, you could you could die trying to kind of make this precise to 19 decimal places. And, and I'm saying that as a complete and utter data freak. Right. You know, and, and, and a real data junk in terms of these things. But the point is around creating um, a baseline that people can understand and, and, and be directed towards. And we'll, we'll come on to that in, in a second. And from that baseline what we can then do is start to link together projects start to prioritize what we do and again just picking up on john's points there a little bit um knowing where to try and lobby and where not to wh wh where's actually worth putting the effort in because you could spend so many hours trying to, to do everything so we, we took this data um, and basically we we plotted a route to net zero by by 2030 now Behind this, there's a whole load of data, a whole bunch of um, uh, analysis and, and, and various kind of bits of um, machine learning and, and all the rest of it. But what, what we've done for the next two years is be much more precise around what projects will contribute to, to which of those emissions. And I'm gonna kind of draw attention to two things on here. One of them is um, something we're very fortunate about. So that um, bar on the far right, you know, we've got, um, we've got more forest than anybody else, um, which is great. Um, which means we sequester a lot of carbon um, in the county. But there's more we can do, and, and we'll talk about that um, uh, in, in a few minutes. But I'll also draw attention to the electricity bar here. So this is a bar where we all need to lobby government. This is entirely reliant on decarbonisation of the grid. So, you know, if, if there was one thing we all lobbied for, it will be to kind of absolutely keep the pressure on making sure that, that those things happen that the government's committed to in terms of decarbonisation, because without them, you know, I, I would go as far to say that that there's no chance, not not just for us as a county, but for us um, as 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 a country. So, but whilst I absolutely love love the detail and and, and I kind of love as much um, uh, detail as you can kind of throw at me, we realise that that's not everybody's cup of tea. So what we thought about was, you know, how could we contextualise this to mean something for for everybody? So we picked our largest natural asset. So, and um, this is a Northern group. So this is kill the water. Everyone's gonna kind of know kill the water. Um, so it's a reservoir in, in the, the North of Northumberland. Um, I'm just gonna, gonna read from my notes a little bit here. So it covers an area of, of nearly 11 kilometers squared. That, that's that's a, a decent amount of space. Um, 
and it's the largest reservoir by volume in England and Wales with a volume of 200 million metres cubed. Now, that, that, I don't really know what that means, but that, that's big, I think, is probably the, um, the, the size of it. A bathtub is 0.2 metres cubed, right? So Kielder is 1.25 billion bathtubs. That, that's probably the kind of way, way to think of it. So to deliver net zero in Northumberland, we need to replace the water of Kielder twice. That, 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 that's our challenge. And when we started to use that iconography with, with people, that, that, that started to mean something because a lot of people in Northumberland have been to Kielder. I don't know if everybody's been because I don't know everybody in Northumberland, but I think most of us probably have, and most people um, on this call probably have. And that, that just really brought it home to people, the scale of the challenge and, and the scale of responsibility we all need to take as part of that challenge. So with that kind of combination of big data and if you like little data, um, we, we'd now created a, a baseline against which we could measure um, our, our changes and our progress against. And you know, we had to shift our focus away from the what to the how. And what became really clear really, really quickly was that this just couldn't be about climate change. This needed to be about a whole load more. So to quote um, uh, um, uh, a famous American president, it's about the economy, right? It, you know, it's not about climate change on its own because if it is just about climate change on its own, then again, I don't think this is gonna work. So we've basically taken the exact same approach and we've flipped it to look at the funding and look at the jobs. And this is where I think John and I could probably have kind of a fair, a fair old argument because I think there's quite a lot of data out there which allows us to get quite precise around what this means in practice. And I'll kind of give you a, a a nice mining example um, later around what, one particular project that we're doing where we think that we can do this. But overall macro picture, in order to deliver our net zero ambition, we think with a, um, you know, a reasonable amount of uncertainty, we need to attract about 1.6 billion pounds of investment into the county. And we need to create about 11,000 jobs in order to deliver the work required across all aspects of, of our plan. And like John, in Durham, we've got a two year plan that sits within a 10 year plan. And every two years, we're gonna cycle through the detail and check and balance against um, that, that, that overall target. So to kind of give you a feel for some of the things that in, in practice that we're doing, we've got three different types of what we're calling flagship projects, which are, are very much kind of the focus across the next two years amongst um, a portfolio of things. But what we've got on the left is district heating, which I'm gonna to talk to about in a little bit more detail in a second. In the middle, um, uh, we've got the forest, which actually is code. When we say forest, we're talking about all the environmental tools. So it's yes, it's about right tree, right place, but it's also about peat um, and, and other environmental um, uh, tools that are at our disposal. And this little guy on the right um, is uh, basically a, a, a car charger, which you guys will be familiar with. And you know, key to Northumberland, actually, I think key to um, uh, um, Durham as well, and, and, and other rural counties as well. How do you make an EV infrastructure work in, in a rural economy? That's quite different from the challenge that, um, uh, you know, um, uh, we, we have within a city. It, it, it's, it's, it's a different problem. And that's something which we need to wrestle with and, and, and think about. But if we think about district heating in a little bit more detail, two of the, the projects which um, our kind of furthest advance and we're looking to kind of um, land in the next couple of years are on the left, that's the, the mine in Blythe. So um, we, we've got a fantastic um, uh, heritage in the Northeast, not just Northumberland, but the whole of the Northeast in terms of mining. And I'm, I'm sure everyone on this call, given um, our sponsors would, um, would agree with that. And what we're doing in Blythe is tapping into the mine water like, like a number of places are to basically create um, a, a renewable um, uh, kind of source of, of heat and energy. And, you know, the key to this is how do you make it commercial now we're quite lucky and blithe in terms of there's communities and there's businesses around there and there's also council estate that we can tap into there's a new um, uh, um factory coming on the horizon that some of you will have read about as well so you know we think that there's enough um business to make this viable um, and and that, 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 that's obviously kind of key and linked to that we're connecting this conversation into tourism so we're building a, a whole um, uh, attraction around Blythe and, and, and you know there's no reason whatsoever why the actual the mine water heating couldn't be part of that visitor attraction in terms of how we attract our, our, our guests and visitors um, into the area. On the right this is a schematic of a hydro scheme in Hexham um, and actually before I forget that um, uh, back to Blythe just just for a minute so 
in Blythe, we think, well, we don't think, we know we need about four million pounds to make that work. And we think that's going to create around 44 jobs. Um, and again, we can get into the detail as to kind of the, the how and the why. But the point is that connection between the big, the 11,000 and the 44 is really key. O otherwise, we're just kind of making this up. And it's got to be both practical, but, but, but ambitious. And the schematic on the right is from Hexham. So this is a Hexham hydro project. So um, in the Tyne Valley, as, as lots of people will know, there's quite a big um, salmon fishing community. So we've got this group of um, and people who are really excited about the environment, but also really skeptical about things like hydro, you know, in the time because it might kill the fish. So again, we're trying to balance those two things together, come up with a solution which is great environmentally, but is also great for climate and, and great for that community in terms of both generating a renewable source of energy, but also in terms of um, uh, you know, attracting inward investment uh, in, in, into that um, uh, market town. And, and, our, and our ambition, zooming back out to the nine years, is to figure out what's the project like those we can put in every one of our 66 wards. Every ward should have a district heating scheme specific to that area that actually people come and see. And maybe in Northumberland, that's a tourist attraction in of itself. And we, and we connect that into a, the broader conversation that we're having um, uh, with, with, with our colleagues in the, in the, in the leisure teams. Um, I'm nearly finished, but I guess what I wanted to kind of finish on is um, nothing to do with data um, and, and nothing to do with um, evidence, but just talk about people. So, you know, I think you could say equally important to tackle in our client emergency will be challenging how residents, business owners, tourists and, and communities think and act. And you know, what actions they're going to take in order to reduce their impact on, on, on the climate. And I think what we can do back to kind of what I'm excited about, which is behavior change and, and information to kind of guide that, is how do we use the information at our disposal to nudge behavior, to kind of make the conditions for success, um, you know, and, and help make people, you know, help encourage people, I should say, make effective choices. And, you know, I, I think for me, coming new to local government is, it's really interesting. The networks exist. These people already exist in the community. The, the government machinery, which quite often um, officers sort of roll their eyes at, turning up to parish councils and the like, that they exist. But the third sector and, and the local champions who want to do this, that they also exist. So these communities are here. And I think our role as local authorities to connect to them, to use that machinery of local government and effectively influence what they do with the information that we've got um, at our disposal. Because without recruiting the entire of the county, th this is not gonna work. This is just gonna be a, a really interesting thought exercise as the planet slowly warms up and, and dare I say it, we all die. Um, and and I, think, I think that that's key. Um, the last bit I just want to kind of underscore, which is back to John's point, L like Durham, we've cemented all of this into our corporate, mechanisms you know I, I also look after corporate performance so I, I can drive this to the top table of members of execs and keep it forefront of mind you know john listed off a whole bunch of things i'll probably blow my time around um you know how they're cementing this in durham um and i I'd kind of just jotted them down he talked about policy procurement um making it every day which i completely agree with the other thing we've done on top of those things is we've created a stat and man training um, uh, events linking into the, the, the carbon literacy group. So basically, quite frankly, force all members or staff through that process. And what we're also trying to do is create a light version of that to push out into our communities. And, and that education, that, 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 that knowledge is, is gonna be um, so key to this. Um, th thanks, uh, Joanna, I'll, I'll, I'll stop there and we can always take questions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Um.